Welcome to the third episode of March Malcontent. Our first match is going to be Corn against Robin. Now that they're back to back, I'm starting to sense a theme in how I skinned the Fire Emblem gray haired protagonists. On the bright side, there's a very low chance that in the actual tournament they'll be fighting each other again. So hopefully the similarities in color palette won't be a problem then. Oh, both be able to grab the like, footstool at the ledge. That's not something you see people go for because, you know, it basically never works. But the amiibo have a really good ability of just always getting footstools. Robin's om oh, was that the spike hit box? All right, well, Corrin already lost a early life. That's also great for Robin. You can see that her weapon th sword is now out. Oh, that combo is now out of durability. It was going to be a problem because it would mean she wouldn't be able to pick up the kill on Robin. But instead, she got an early kill, and now her sword's back. So she's basically no worse for wear. Corrin seems to be taunting a lot. That's not something I like to see. <sighs> That's another taunt. Oh, no. There's something about how the amiibo always interpret the inputs you've given them. It seems to be that... Sometimes they just seem to take it differently. My best guess is that since the... The normal CPU AI in the game is programmed to kind of try to adapt against human players. So if you do the same thing a whole bunch of times, the computer will start to do it. So my theory is that since the amiibo use a modified version of that AI, is that using an amiibo on a different console has a chance of producing a different result, just based off of how people have played on there. For, for April Anger, we're always just using the one console, because I can't think of a good reason to not, aside from, you know, that niche theory that might not even be true. Like, I have no evidence to back that up. That's just a guess. Even if it's a slightly logical guess, I don't know anything about the code of this game. I haven't really seen it. <laughs> There's not really any way to as a normal civilian. Oh, wow, that recovery caught the at the ledge. So anyways, I think that's why sometimes you'll see, for example, Corn taunted three times in a row, and then basically hasn't since. Now if Corn is one of the- oh, and there's another taunt. I guess I brought it into being by the mere evocation of words. So every year, after the main April Anger tournament- Corn's gotten hit by so many of those swords. After the main tournament, I always have a loser's bracket. It's called May Malaise. Basically, it's where we determine the- well- the worst performing amiibo, and the four worst performers get retrained. The idea being that if, you know, we were to do this for, let's hypothetically say, 25 years, at the end of those 25 years, all the amiibo that remain would be absolute monsters. Now, due to the way statistics works, I don't think it would quite end up like that. However, it has redeemed some amiibo that have had problems competing in Is that gonna kill Horn? It is. Robins is going to move along. Corrin has more of a journey, at least, you know, in the month of March. For our second match, we have Luigi against Captain Falcon. And what are the odds? They're both purple. I mean, I guess Captain Falcon's a little bit more of a dark red, because the skin's actually a reference to the F-Zero series, but, you know, still, these are... The colorations are just... So similar, yet again. And it looks like we might be having this problem with the stage again. I'll see if I can pull this off of the rotation. Okay, granted that only lasted for about 15 seconds, but... It does seem to be a continuous... problem. Which is especially weird, because... As far as stage hazards go, otherwise... Like, this stage really isn't that bad. Got a floating platform, sometimes you can get saved on the bottom if you whiff your recovery. I mean, without the cars coming in every once in a while, it... 
Yeah, and see, that time they didn't even care. So maybe we'll just treat it as a unique stage hazard. Unless it starts being even more of a problem. But so far, it just cost us about 10 seconds this match, so it might be acceptable enough to continue. Alright, you know what? I think I just decided I'm gonna have to cut this stage from the list. I'll do that between matches so you guys don't even have to see it. But that is very unfortunate. Up smash, not killing Captain Falcon. Captain Falcon, I just realized, has done almost no damage to Luigi. Going low, not able to... Uh, getting saved by the road. Which is a saying I guess I never thought. Nice retaliation hit from Luigi. Captain Falcon does not properly recover. If he used his up B, I'm pretty sure he would have made it. it. Gets caught in lag at a very inopportune time. Luigi needs to be saved. He is not saved. Trying to grab Captain Falcon, but he did it from the wrong platform, so his goal was that Captain Falcon would fall, fast fall through the platform, and then Luigi would catch him. It's quite a... A very specific play to make. I don't know if you saw there, but Luigi actually footstooled off of Captain Falcon when he was in his shield. If you footstool someone while they're doing a different action, usually like any sort of move or... Well, there's basically some in actions you can't interrupt with the footstool. You still get the footstool, but the opponent doesn't get the other half of the animation where, you know, you're jumping off their head. It's a little weird because usually I would think that you can't, well, that shielding is not an uninterruptible footstool animation. Guess I'm going to have to look that up. Ooh, very clutch up B. Getting Captain Falcon off the side, Falcon's able to recover, and gets brought back to center by a very gracious Luigi. Able to get off the road before the hitbox was active. Getting saved by it. But Captain Falcon is just not hitting Luigi. Alright, he hit him there, but for the most part, he just can't seem to keep... That's going to kill Luigi. The road is going to save him. He has a side B. He still doesn't have a double jump. Gets hit by a very weird-looking hitbox. Shields the forward smash, and Luigi is able to headbutt Captain Falcon. Next match, we have Greninja against Pac-Man. Alright, looks like we're on Final Destination. I don't think that'll benefit either character specifically. I guess Pac-Man's a little bit more projectile-oriented, but Greninja does have one. And a counter that can really help stuff them out. Greninja's easily able to make that back, even after getting hit by the Hydrant. Greninja does have a pretty good recovery. Basically, as long as you still have your jump, you can make it back from the bottom of the screen. Ah, uh, unable to chain the second down air together. It's pretty hard to do since the down air bounces you off your opponent's head. Does not get the fully charged version, so it's not going to drag Pac-Man further along. Again, Greninja going for the double down air. Not something that you see, especially because it normally doesn't work. Greninja going super low. Hydro Pump actually dealing a damage state to the trampoline. Something you always gotta watch out for, because if the trampoline turns red, then whoever hits it goes into special fall. As a fun aside fact, it's not like officially confirmed or anything, but because of that move, they had to give every character a special fall animation. Previously in Smash Bros. Brawl, some characters would have a special recovery that wouldn't give you special fall. For example, like Sonic, 
Ooh, Greninja just really whiffed that recovery. For example, Sonic, you use your up B, you bounce off the spring, and you can still attack, you just can't use the spring again. However, if you land on the red trampoline, then you get put into special fall, and if you don't have an animation for that, that would be pretty bad. So they had to give every character a special animation, basically because of that move. It's actually pretty interesting, because before Brawl, the distinction was always that any recovery move put you into special fall, and you only got that back when you either hit or you got back on the ground. So any character who, for some reason, wouldn't have had a special fall animation, for example, Kirby, he probably didn't have one, because his hypercutter brings him up and then brings him down pretty quickly. So he gets to use the move until he lands onto a platform. So in, for example, Smash Bros. Melee or Smash 4, if you don't land on the ground, you instead fall into the void, you would never need the special fall animation for that. But possibly because of Pac-Man, all of that had to change. It actually has led for some interesting interactions where characters with similar recoveries such as that can land on the stage and then get pushed off before their animation completes, and then they get put into special fall, even though they normally wouldn't be able to. Alright, they're just kind of having fun on the ledge there. Uh, Greninja getting hit by the fire hydrant. If you hit it with any sort of hitbox, it deactivates the hitbox. Of the fire hydrant, I mean. So basically, if you attack Pac-Man as he throws out the hydrant, you don't get punished for, you know, trying to hit someone who's above you. A lot of people don't seem to know that, and I don't think there's any way for the amiibo to know it either. Pac-Man does not find his trampoline. That's actually something you'd see a human player do. When the trampoline is off-screen, you don't exactly know where it is. Normally, if you don't grab the ledge, you would retreat back to it, or if you're a Pac-Man player, you know how high your recovery goes. So you wouldn't commit to a direction, especially since in that case, Greninja wasn't even pursuing Pac-Man off the bottom of the screen. Making it a lot more free, I suppose. Alright, Greninja's off stage. Pac-Man throws a fire hydrant. Greninja dodges it. Air dodges near the ledge. That's... It's not necessarily bad, but it delayed him from catching the ledge faster. So normally you should be content with catching the ledge instead of... And that up smash catch is going to defeat Greninja. Pac-Man, you're going to be seeing him guaranteed in April Anger. And here we have Donkey Kong against Steve. A lot of this will definitely play out to be how good Steve can play Keep Away. Donkey Kong is a character who has really terrible disadvantage, but amazing advantage. So basically once Donkey Kong starts hitting you, he's not going to stop. Tech's on the block platform. Something you don't see every day. So anyways, Donkey Kong is really good at pressing his advantage, and when he's on the back foot, he's really on the back foot. Steve, of course, excelling with keeping opponents away, which will be out of punching distance of Donkey Kong. Steve is actually getting some combos here, but Donkey Kong makes it back with an amazing up smash raid, with just enough rage, range to reach through the anvil. Steve unable to finish the combo against Donkey Kong. At that high of a percent, getting hit with the spike of the forward air is definitely lethal. Up smash will kill Donkey Kong. But not without having taken some damage first, and any damage against a hard hitter, such as Donkey Kong, can be incredibly important. Donkey Kong trying to approach with a neutral air, it's really not a great approaching method. In fact, you usually don't even see it that much. It's probably Donkey Kong's least utilized aerial. The main appeal of it 
is mostly that if you hit someone with it, you can cancel it into another move. But with how hard Donkey Kong hits, you usually are just happy hitting any move. Especially with things being percentage dependent, you you just can't hit neutral air to forward smash or other such combos. And an anvil is going to kill Donkey Kong. <laughs> Down air almost killed Steve off the top, that's how strong of a move it is. Donkey Kong seems to be jumping a lot. It's not as great for him. Mostly just because Steve is so great at covering the air. Ooh, getting one hit of the uppy, that's interesting at least, even if it didn't accomplish a lot. Getting the spike on Steve off stage. This is probably anyone's game. Advantage Steve, but you never know. So you did get the golden equipment, it has the least durability, but it comes out the fastest. Actually a valuable trait to have against Donkey Kong. Especially since Donkey Kong keeps trying to hit Nair, and it's just not as fast as most, most other Nairs are. Neutral Air, I should say, in case someone doesn't know. Steve has broken his pickaxe, but he got a lot of resources. He probably has enough for the rest of the game right now. Getting hit by the dash attack and a... Not the spike kickbox, but it's still killed. That match is going to go to Donkey Kong. Alright, up next, Ryu against Hero. Something I just noticed about the Hero amiibo while I was, you know, sticking it to the controller, is that his sword actually sticks or pokes out below the range of the base of the figurine. So, all the amiibos have the circular base that has the Smash Brothers logo on it. And for the most part, every other amiibo has features that stay above it. However, Hero's sword actually dips below the ground level, which actually means that he has a pose that, if you were to translate it in-game and then put him on a flat surface, should be an invalid pose, because his sword would be sticking through the ground. It's especially interesting, because part of the design of the amiibo is actually based off of the old trophy system other Smash Brothers games used to have, which would be that, basically, instead of spirits, you would have a whole bunch of physical 3D models. The reason they had to change was actually just because not having a big enough development team. I mean, when you think about it, there's, what, like 1,700 spirits in the game now? If each... Clutch Footstool from Hero. If each one of them had a 3D model, that's 1,700 models that have to get made. Whereas since they're effectively just flat images now, it does mean that they were able to use them from official already generated sources. Stuff like from the cover of games, or official renders. Uh, maybe some of them were made for Smash Ultimate, but for the most part, a lot of them got to be pre-existing. Or possibly generated in-engine. Alright, Ryu needs to get a kill on Hero now, Ryu is usually not a character who struggles to get the killing blow, especially because of his ability to cancel normal moves into special moves, and a lot of his special moves can kill. I guess Hadouken doesn't kill, but that's it's a projectile, and, and Ryu's gonna die to that. Alright, this is now a very uphill battle. Oh, yep, Ryu showing how uh, even if you can cancel it, a move into a special move doesn't automatically mean it's going to combo. Ryu's taking a lot of damage and not getting many kills here. I am now worried for his health. Hero doesn't help. Oh, he just finally pulled out his command menu. He hasn't seemed to be using any of his moves, so finally getting killed by Ryu. Hero hasn't been using many of his moves that use his magic meter gauge. It's... Oh, and the snooze does not connect. Alright, and Hero is now using a lot of moves that use his magic meter gauge. That's what I get for talking, I suppose. But that's what you're here for. Either that or you're here for the gameplay.
hero goes low, he is able to make it back. He goes not as low this time, but he's still struggling to get on stage. Ryu is going a lot lower than most Ryus were meant to go. <sighs> Comboing the down air into the Hadouken again. Usually, at least when I was playing against him, he'd always combo like down air into me bouncing off the floor into a short Ryuken true input. Or at least it was, it felt like it was always a true input because with the amiibo strength bonus, I was dying incredibly early every time. So it hurt because it wasn't a instantaneous conversion, it was always, it kind of felt like an accident, as if the amiibo was mashing buttons and I happened to get hit by it. And Hero starts going down low again and again. Ryu's going to be able to make that back, although if the Lilat spacecraft had tilted just a little bit more, he might not have been able to. And finally, ooh, using the slope to duck under that magic attack. Ah, smart move by Hero there. He pulled out the command menu, canceled it with his shield, and then attacked. Normally you expect Hero to either use one of the menu moves or to just block, but he chose a third option, and as an indirect result, he won the game. Alright, up next we have Ike against Kirby. Kirby Smash Bros. There's two Kirby Amiibo. One of them is Kirby Classic. His physical trophy was actually from the Kirby Planet Robobot printing. Put him in the tournament kind of just because I felt like it. It's my tournament, my rules. And the other one is the Smash Brothers line of Kirby. Kirby waited a long time in order to make that tech. He did, to his credit, make the tech. However, when you have a character with as many jumps as Kirby does, normally you would either jump to put pressure on the opponent, or you just throw out and a quick aerial to land without needing to tech. Especially since Ike probably couldn't have caught up in time. Great improv wall combo from Kirby there, though. He kind of messed it up at the end, just kind of dashing in place. It's the price you pay for being an amiibo, I suppose. Ike aggressively keeping center stage. And he just got killed. Alright. Yeah, Ike just really likes being on that top platform. It's almost mesmerizing. See, now he doesn't know what to do because he doesn't know how to edgeguard Kirby. Down smash on Ike. Oh, the down air doesn't connect. That probably would have killed Ike. Kirby's down air is, as far as spikes go, it's not the strongest by any means. However, it has so many multi-hits, it stays out for a long time, and Kirby has a lot of jumps, giving him more chances to get it. There was actually a problem when Smash Ultimate was released, and that the spike was even worse. During one of the spirit battles in World of Light, I actually spiked an Isabel five times in a row and she still lived. So they've made it better now. Like If you get more than three, the opponent is basically guaranteed to be dead. And if they're at a higher percent, they, you might only need one, possibly two. You know, depending on where you hit them. But... Ah, very interesting combo from Kirby. Up smash to getting one of the middle hits of down air. Oh, he's got... Aw, oh, he had Ike pinned up against the wall, but he didn't hold it longer for more damage. Barely outspacing that smash attack there. Down smash, that's gonna kill Ike! That's his last stock! Ike just can't recover from that low. Kirby makes it in. And up next, we have Zero Suit Samus against Krom. Now, I don't normally like to show bias in these, however, last year, Zero Suit Samus took the longest to train. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. When I did all the retraining, Zero Suit Samus, Samus just took the longest to, well, meet the standard that I had set. Like, the bar minimum of the amiibo needs to be able to at least beat another character in order for their training to be complete. The... Zero Samus Amiibo does seem to just really struggle, 
That being said, given the copious amount of training, I'm personally hoping that Zero Suit Samus can take a game this year. Especially because if not, then I'm going to have to do another training session, and there's only so much training you can do. I mean, already you can see that just in pure actions per minute, Zero Suit Samus seems to be a lot more hyperactive than Krom. Which is weird, because normally Krom would be a character who throws out a whole bunch of aerials. Mm -hmm. Zero Suit Samus made that. Throws out a whole bunch of aerials, even if you know they're not going to hit. His character is kind of based off of Roy, not, you know, in lore, but in Smash Brothers. He's effectively Roy, but with Ike's recovery, and his sword is evenly balanced throughout. So he is still pretty good in people's faces. However, he doesn't need to be quite as close and intimate as Roy needs to be. And Zero Suit Samus is doing a great job just orbiting Krom, staying out of the range of the sword. But I don't think she's getting enough chip damage to really make up for all the hits she's been taking. She does get a grab on that tech, though. That is one of the perks of slower grabs, is that the hitbox is out longer. You know, generally. They could make a grab where the hitbox is out for a small moment and the move is incredibly laggy, but they fixed Pac-Man from Smash 4, so that's not really a problem anymore. Is Zero Suit Samus not getting killed by Krom at the ledge there. Gets an up smash. He's auto healed too much percentage for that to kill there. Going for a lot of down Bs when she is completely out of range. I don't think the amiibo seems to understand how exactly the move works. Oh, and that roll brought him right outside of the range of that grab. Nice parry, gets a down smash, goes for a down B. It's not going to connect. <laughs> gets part of an up smash, but it gets stuffed out with the trade. A good parry from Krom, but then he went into a down smash. That got him punished. Goes for a neutral B, has to release it. Zero Suit goes for the edge guard. Nothing comes out of it. Does not get the up smash read. Well, she gets the read, but she was off in her spacing, so it didn't. Oh, she gets the spike against Krom, but he was already in his super armor from his ether recovery. The back hit of neutral air is going to kill Zero Suit Samus, putting Krom in the lead. Taking all of the hits with the super armor there. Super armor is normally a gift, but I feel like in that case it actually made him take more damage because he wasn't getting launched away. Up B is going to kill Krom. It's one of Zero Suit Samus' best kill options. I'm actually a little surprised she hasn't been using it more. I mean, it does leave you vulnerable, so normally you have to, say, combo it into the down B flip kick berry, but Zero Suit has been getting almost none of those. Up smash and up B, unorthodox combo, but it checks out. Bounces off the shield, Krom for some reason doesn't act quick enough to punish that. I think normally you'd be able to. Krom keeps recovering and not even snapping the ledge. Now, Krom's ether does have a slight, I, I guess I want to call it a problem. It's a little bit riskier because Krom doesn't get a hitbox until he grabs the sword. So if you go super low, there is a very good chance that a skilled opponent can hit you out of your recovery, and because his recovery is basically entirely vertical, if he gets launched away from the stage at, well, any angle other than really high up, he's probably not going to be able to grab the ledge again. 
So while it's been working out for him currently, it could definitely spell disaster in the future. I mean, if nothing else, Zero Suit Samus' side B should be able to hit him at the peak of Ether. At least I would think. A lot of safe options on Chrome's shield. Zero Suit Samus got barely punished. She did not throw out a back air, though. That probably could have punished his high well, medium high recovery there. It gets him off stage, and the super armor gets her again. Jumps over the grab. Up B, it's a little too low to kill. I mean, Crown was only at about 50 at the time anyway, so a kill would have been a little early. We got Crown off stage, unable to get the flip kick spike. Crown getting a. I would never have guessed that grab to hit. Going for a back row, unable to successfully combo the neutral air. I'm pretty sure the second hit there would have actually killed Zero Suit. Very safe options against a shield, not getting punished, slowly chipping him down like carving a block of marble. And Chrome is finally able to swap the fly, which is Zero Suit Samus. Very clever there, she actually air dodged on the stage after the flip kick, meaning she didn't have to recover. Things that save you just a second like that can be very vital, especially when you're trying to edge guard opponents. Zero Suit seems to keep missing all these flip kick hits, even though she gets the animation for them. Would Krom grab that? Mid flip kick? Ah, uh, Zero Suit Sam's. Not grabbing the ledge there, for some reason this, ugh, that spike doesn't quite go well. And Zero Suit Samus, for some reason, the amiibo doesn't usually like to B-reverse it to grab the ledge, even though most other amiibo do. It's a little bit of a double-edged sword, because normally you want to grab the edge sooner. However, if your opponent does something, getting hit by a outward-facing Zero Suit Samus up special has actually gotten her a lot of kills. At least in the matches that I've seen. And it's not like there's much I can do about it anyway, because I don't think you can teach the CPUs to reverse stuff. And a random Ether Spike is going to kill Zero Suit Samus! Alright, that match went a lot shorter at the end than I thought it was going to. Chrom moves on. Alright, we have the last match of the video. Shulk against Yoshi. It's going to be pretty interesting to see how this goes out. I think Yoshi might be at a slight disadvantage, duly, mainly because of range. Although we are in Princess Peach's castle, usually fights on this stage normally turn out to be that the contestants normally stay on one side of the main pillar in the middle. It does leave you less room to run away. I mean, I guess Yoshi's double jump is high enough he can just retreat to the other side whenever he feels like it. Couple up smashes against Shulk. Shulk was in Jump Monado, so he does get penalized more than normal. Now would probably be a great time for Shulk to maybe go into Shield Monado, since he's at such a high percent, but I don't think he seems to understand that. He could also possibly go into. But oh, he goes into Jump. He really didn't need it for that recovery, but. The last hit doesn't connect, that's good for Shul. And Yoshi able to retaliate with an up air, putting Shul very much on the back foot. He does go for the down smash, it's a little bit weird to do it on such a small platform because you're never going to get all the hits to connect. Especially because of how long the move takes. Normally your best hope for it is to be in, for example, Buster Monado and hope that you can break the shield. Oh look, Buster Monado. Now is a fine time for Shulk to go into this. The idea is that since you take more damage when you're in Buster Monado... Well, I hope it's damage and not knockback. I always get the two confused. The idea is that you hit the opponent more than you get hit yourself. And then you get more damage off of it as a result. 
However, if you get stuck in a particularly bad combo from your opponent, and Shulk did die. So that is something to watch out. When you're in a Monado that makes you take more percentage, more percentage also equates to more knockback, simply because of how the damage formula works. The You take the percentage and then the knockback is applied. And with any of your Monados, you're, you can take more damage and then the knockback is applied. And if it's the knockback's applied against someone with more damage, then you're going to be taking more knockback. It actually got pretty interesting in Smash 4 because of certain custom moves that Shulk had that would basically give him the most extreme versions of the Monado effects. Some of them had to be altered. Um, for example, if you had a Shulk in Buster Monado with the Critical Hit Spirit and a high attack, you could, I'm not kidding, deal 150% to someone with one smash attack. And then they would go nowhere because they put a a very harsh dampening effect on it, so that, you know, effectively one hit wouldn't be an insta kill. Shulk getting hit at the exact wrong angle, that's gonna finish off his last stock. Yoshi, Yoshi moves on. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. There's more if you want to see them. And you know at some point the main tournament that's gonna happen, preferably in the month of April. Until then though, I hope you have a great day.